In these weeks, an incredible result seems to have blown up in cosmology, in elementary particles and in astrophysics. A new result made by a group led by Stacy McGuff in the United States seems to have found that dark matter does not exist. Everyone knows that dark matter is one of the fundamental components of the universe, not only, but also is the component which backs galaxies like our own. Instead, McGuff et al. have found a relationship which seems to put in danger the existence itself of this particle. They have used a sample by 150 galaxies and in each galaxy, at any radius, have measured two different accelerations. The first acceleration, we call it G, is if the V is the velocity or rotation of an object at a certain radius given by rotation curve, so V squared divided R is the acceleration that a body feels at distance R. Then one has also the component of this acceleration due to the luminous matter. So I call this GB, it will be the velocity square due to the baryonic component divided R. So we have two different quantities. In the presence of no dark matter scenario, clearly the two quantities are equal. The result that they found is that these quantities were not equal, and this is what we will expect from theory, but the two quantities, they were extremely well correlated. Here is the relationship. As you can see, at very high acceleration, one finds that the two quantities are proportional, as we will expect in Newtonian gravity. But at low acceleration, the two quantities are not anymore uh, proportional, the relationship bent and stays, as we can see, in relation with the other. The matter is uh, something which is collisionless, so one should say that uh, the properties of the luminous matter should not be proportional to the properties of the dark matter, because they are two di completely different particles which exist in nature. This result by McGuff has convinced many scientists that the evidence for dark matter in galaxies is not so strong as people think. We have tackled this important issue because if dark matter is not an evidence in galaxies, everything changes in cosmology at least, by using a larger sample of objects and using different methods to measure the quantity which are in play. So we start in a scenario in which galaxies are surrounded and lay within dark matter halos. So therefore their rotation curve will have been one component due to the bulge, one component due to the disk and one component due to the dark halo. Differently from what has been done by McGuff, our acceleration due to the baryonic matter will be simply the total acceleration minus the acceleration of the dark matter. To get this, we used three different methods. The first one comes from the universal rotation curve, which has been found to exist in galaxy, and we can use this relation to get the baryonic component as the total component minus the halo component. The second method comes from the radial Tallefischer, a relationship which links in galaxies uh, the luminosity and the velocity at certain radii. Again, we get the halo component in the acceleration and we get again the acceleration due to the baryonic mass as the difference between the two accelerations. 
The third method concerns individual objects, which are very, very important in, in that we can uh, understand and study the dramatic distribution out to the very large distance from the center. The galaxy considered were M33 and NGC 3741. And again, we make a mass model and we find, through trying to fit the rotation curve, the component due to the dark matter halo. Again, when you have the dark matter halo, you put inside here and you get the acceleration due to the baryon. So basically, we have done exactly the thing that they have done McGuffey company, but in a strict model of dark matter halo. The approach by McGuffey et al. is agnostic to the dark matter halo. They get this quantity here directly from the luminous matter. So without making any assumption, contrary to us. Okay, so we have different sample, we have different methods, and let's, a different also scenario. Let's see what happens. We see in the figure, then the relationship found by McGuff is very, very similar to the relationship that we found in our samples. The first conclusion that we can give is that also in a scenario with dark matter, we find the same relationship. We want to understand where this relation comes from. To do this, we have to do a sort of retro engineering approach in which we assume the existence, of course, of this relationship and we see what really imply the galaxies. As we see here, we have the standard disk profile, we have the bulge profile, we have the halo profile velocity, and the plus a general velocity. In this case, we take a very general profile with these three parameters, which will be able you know, to uh, investigate any kind of distribution of that matter. But it's interesting to see where this general model fails. Okay, so we realize that it fails when you have b equal zero, so means that you don't have dark matter, or if you have dark matter which is much higher, so b equal larger than 0.3, or d minus one half, which means that the dark matter is more concentrated than the luminous matter. So therefore it's easy to arrive to the conclusion why this relation exists. Exists because we know that the dark matter is less concentrated than luminous matter, because the luminous matter fell in the potential well out to the center of the galaxy. The dark matter stayed outside the galaxy because it does not interact. Second, there is more dark matter than in a small object than in a bigger object. Again, this is normal because in small galaxies, the supernova can remove the baryons from the galaxies itself. In big galaxies, this fact is much more complex. So, therefore, the McGuff relationship tells us how spirals have been formed, but doesn't say anything on the internal properties of dark matter. To understand this, we need other relationships that really are related to local properties of the dark matter and local properties of the luminous matter and they are portals to lead us to the nature of dark matter. But the relationship by McGuff et al. not only is something which in no way put problem for the dark matter scenario, but doesn't even say that the dark matter nature is weird. A cosmologist has stated that the relation by McGuff is a serious a fatal challenge to the dark matter hypothesis since it shows that the rotation curve are precisely determined by distribution of normal matter alone. Uh, it is many, many years that we know that dark and luminous matter are coupled in galaxies and they form the actual rotation curve. This relationship 
was considered to be a challenge for dark matter, but in reality is a manifestation of dark matter. How is the galaxy disk formed along the history of the universe? <laughs>